You're watching World Inside, coming to you live from Beijing. Later in our program, astronauts aboard a SpaceX capsule docked with the ISS, International Space Station. Does this mark a new era in space exploration, public-private partnership between SpaceX and NASA? Welcome back. You're still watching World Inside Live on CGTN. I'm Tian Wei. Next, we take a look at the giant leap in space exploration. Two NASA astronauts have blasted their way into history books during the past weekend. They were sent into the space by Elon Musk's SpaceX rocket and later boarded the International Space Station. It's the first for a private company and the first in nearly a decade for NASA. Meanwhile, China is expected to launch the last satellite of its Beidou navigation satellite in June, completing its Beidou navigation system. The U.S. GPS will no longer be the only option for China as Beidou is expected to provide a more accurate service. So, how do competition and cooperation play their key roles in the international space industry? Right before the launch of SpaceX, I talked to Professor Wu Ji, who is the former director general of the National Space Science Center at the Chinese Academy of Sciences. He congratulated the big step forward in public-private partnership for space exploration for his NASA colleagues. What do you make of the cooperation between SpaceX and NASA in terms of sending astronauts into the outer space, International Space Station? Uh, it is a new uh, uh, matter of, uh, of uh, 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 operation of NASA's program. It's called uh, uh, Public-Private uh, Partnership. So uh, uh, this is the first time that uh, a private company, a commercial space company, launched uh, astronaut, a manned space, to join the manned space program. So this is a very uh, significant uh, progress. And uh, to have a commercial company joining the government uh, agencies has several uh, reasons. One is uh, it has a very low cost, much lower cost, uh, because uh, of the government agency is, uh, is belongs to the government. The government has to pay them and has to uh, keep them living, and so the agency became bigger and bigger. So it's uh, getting very heavy now since Apollo time. Uh, but the commercial company has much efficiency uh, working styles, so the, the cost of a commercial company can be much lower. So to give the government a program to the commercial company can lower down the price. So this is a very significant movement. Fifty-five million dollars, I heard, it will be for one seat if this is uh, operating commercially. Tourists going to the outer space, wow, that's really expensive. Yes, I agree. It, it is a very high price. And uh, to my opinion, it should be much lower down uh, in the future. But this is at the very beginning. So uh, they will start with this. Uh, this uh, quotation is also calculated uh, including the launchers, including the capsule uh, retrievals coming back to the Earth, and also the operation of the space station, and all this add on. So uh, at the moment, uh, this is the price. But uh, we are uh, expecting a much lower price in the future, because with this price, the space tourism cannot develop. It's too much. And only uh, the top rich people can, can, can do it. It seems that the outer space has been a source both of cooperation and competition. Therefore, Mr. Wu, what does this mean uh, for uh, U.S.-Russia ties in terms of exploring the outer space? Will they go once again back to more competition? Yes, because space is, uh, belongs to the whole human beings. So we have to collaborate there. We are not uh, fighting each other. But the competition is to have, uh, in order to have the better solution. So if you have a little bit competition, you will have a better solution, you will have a cheaper cost, uh, you, uh, it, it will get you more efficient. So it's, it's not that bad to have some competition. But it should not be a war, should not be a fighting, uh, should not be a star war. So a competition collaboration is the way to make a space exploration go forward. 
Mr. Wu, you've been in the field for decades. Uh, you've been participating in some of the mega projects China has been working on in the ultra space. Uh, you know, frankly speaking, isn't this going to be more competition from now on as a result of geopolitics? Even between the United States and Russia, we see uh, the U.S. President and Vice President making a, a lot of remarks about the political significance and the national powers of this mission. Yes, uh, space is a very special uh, science and technology or even eco economic area. It's very special. Uh, up to now, all, most of the, even uh, more than 80% of the investment to space activities are coming from government. So, and it's also quite uh, related with the defense technologies. So that's why uh, behind this uh, space technology is, is different government, U.S. government, Russian government, and the Chinese government to put money in. So they have to, so it's uh, very much depends on the geopolitics, uh, the relations between the country, uh, whether you can collaborate or whether you help each other and whether you trust each other. So it's uh, very political. So sometimes we call this uh, old space. If talking about uh, collaboration and cooperation, what are some of the areas that countries still have the chance to do it? Uh, for example, between China and U.S., uh, between U.S. and Russia, uh, between China and Russia? It uh, totally depends on the, the, the relation between the governments. If the government want to use space as a tool to change the relations, they will do it. For example, at the, at the space race time, uh, during the Cold War time, uh, the U.S. government and, uh, and uh, the Soviet government has uh, already decided to collaborate in space. They are docking the space shuttle together with the uh, uh, Mir space station, which is a totally Russian space station. So they docked each other and the astronauts working together. So because of that, they changed the scenario of the political relations between the two powers. So depends on the government. If they want to use space as a tool to change the relation and to have uh, to build up a trust it's a, it is still a field to have a collaboration talking about collaboration competition china has been working hard on the moon mission while the us is uh, uh, aiming at the mars mission i mean nasa itself rather than the co uh, commercial cooperation with uh, spacex so uh, mr wu uh, very different goals uh, uh, why the two are so different and what does that mean for the two's uh, blueprint and the technological achievements likely to happen as a result of this uh, China is uh, working for the moon, and uh, we have uh, uh, Chang'e missions, uh, several uh, successful uh, launches already up to Chang'e 4. So that we have uh, launched four missions, and the end of this year we will launch Chang'e 5, which has a uh, lander and sample taken and, uh, 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 and uh, ascending and then docking on in the orbiter of the moon in the orbit of the moon and then going back to the Earth and uh, so it's called sample return mission. So we, we put a lot of effort on the moon. But at the same time, China is also looking at Mars. We, are, we will launch this year in uh, July the first Chinese uh, Mars mission. So uh, Mars is also a target. But the technology develop uh, little by little. So we have to start from the moon and go to the Mars. For the U.S., they are much advanced uh, for Mars. They have uh, uh, dozens of uh, Mars missions, and this year they will have a very complicated, uh, a sophisticated uh, lander, uh, labo scientific laboratory on Mars. So uh, we will go together this year because uh, every 25 to 26 months, there's a launch window. So this year, there will be several missions uh, launching, uh, launch uh, for Mars mission uh, to go to Mars. So China will be one of them. Cold War, by the way, has been a phrase that I've been hearing quite frequently recently, which is to me quite sad, I'm sure to our viewers as well. However, during the Cold War time, we see uh, countries being pumping into a huge budget uh, for their outer space uh, exploration competition uh, programs. Uh, how do you think China should think about the issue smartly and uh, make sure it is uh, uh, for uh, the uh, most pragmatic benefits and uh, also make sure it can 
serve as much as we try uh, a source for peace? Uh, it's a very good question. Uh, during the Cold War, there's a, there's a competition, a very little collaboration. So when you have a competition uh, during the Cold War, uh, Cold War, you have uh, it's a kind of a game, and uh, with that game you cannot win. Nobody can win, so everybody is loose. Everybody put a lot of money on both sides, and uh, which is useless to have that competition. So uh, we should avoid that. China will never join this kind of. Uh, Risk. Uh, China, we, we will go uh, along our own uh, program and we have our own plan. We will never, never, draw, we will never compete with other countries. We, we have our own uh, uh, development plan. So little by little. So we, I believe we, we are not inside this uh, Cold War or kind of a space race, any kind of space race. On the other hand, uh, Professor Wu, some argue, well, it was during the Cold War time that the U.S. Uh, managed to put astronauts onto the moon, the first ever moon exploration by human. It was during the Cold War time. It was also during the Cold War time that both the former Soviet Union and the U.S. been making tremendous progress in the outer space exploration project. Some could argue that even today, what we have now was based on the achievements then. So, uh, Mr. Wu, how do you see the other side of the argument? Yes, uh, that was uh, 50 years ago uh, when Armstrong landed on the moon, uh, moon uh, uh, representing the human beings, as the NASA said, but they have never go the, uh, performed the second step. So that's finished because it's a political demand. There's only political demand. And although they are, re uh, they are holding a flag of a scientific exploration, but uh, it's, it is true, it's a political it was a political um, uh, action, so it's during the Cold War. And after they had the victor victory, uh, there's no demand. They have already won the war. Why should they win it again? There's no enemies. So that, that is why the human being stops there. So we, we, if there's no political drive, there's nobody, no government put that much money to send the man to the, um, uh, uh, to the moon again. Only now the, the drive is science, but uh, the budget for science, for each, even for the U.S. government, doesn't have that much. They say they want to go to send uh, astronauts go to Mars, but that costs 20 years of NASA budget, 25 years of NASA budget, if they do any, if they do only this mission. So it's a lot. So it, it sounds even impossible. So that's why commercial space is very useful to come in. We sometimes we call it a new space. The new space will be a new driver with a public, a general public uh, demand. So, so this, this may uh, put uh, to have some new input and uh, uh, we will see some new uh, uh, actions later on. Uh, final set of question for you, Mr. Wu, is about the current situation, COVID-19. In the middle of pandemic, uh, NASA and SpaceX, it seems that they were fighting against the wind in order to put the astronauts to maintain their safety and also health and put them onto the spaceship. Uh, so uh, how much uh, do you think uh, you are getting out of uh, uh, the current uh, situation in terms of COVID-19 vis-a-vis an outer space exploration trip? It is uh, very difficult to say because uh, Particularly, U.S. is uh, under a very serious uh, situation now. The, the, the new confirmed cases are still growing uh, or vibrating. Uh, so it is, uh, it is uh, so dangerous to have any astronaut uh, get infected and then they get sick uh, inside the space station. And inside the space station is a very closed space and all the astronauts living there, and if one gets infected, all the others will get infected. So I'm sure NASA take a very serious measure of this. So the, the, before the astronauts go into space, they should have a very strict uh, quarantine uh, process, and uh, even longer than 14 days. So they, they, they should be very, very careful. So I'm sure they, they, they are doing it. I'm sure they are doing it much better than the public uh, situation in the U.S. Uh, what do you think you're going to expect and read out of this trip? Uh, as a researcher, as someone who's been working with the U.S. scientists for decades, how 
are you going to observe uh, this mission from the very beginning until it wraps up? I will uh, watch it uh, all the time as uh, uh, start from the launch and the most dangerous is the launch. So if the launch is successful, uh, I'm sure they, they have done very good uh, work, a very good job, and uh, I'm sure 99.9% .9 it, it will be okay. And uh, then after that, uh, I'm sure it will be even more safe. So uh, they will dock with the station and then the astronaut will, will have uh, activities there and then there will be two astronauts coming back and the retrieval is another uh, period of dangers. But they have done an uh, unmanned test also several times. So I'm sure there will be uh, no problem. And uh, only if the astronaut landed on the ground, I will feel safe. 99.9% .9 that is according to Professor Wu Ji. The successful launch and cooperation between SpaceX and NASA. And that's all we have for today. If you'd like to see more, you can certainly search World Insight in the search engine or check out our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter and Facebook accounts. I'm Ken Wei. On behalf of the team, thanks for watching. Bye for now.